Well, welcome everybody. Today I am going to be sharing four different fall kind of inspired recipes because three are soups and what better way to bring in the meal time in the fall than having some soups. So the first I'm going to share with you is a chicken marinara spaghetti squash dish and then I have another quite a few have chicken involved because i cooked a whole chicken so this is a good way to use a whole chicken and then i have a black bean soup which is meatless if you prefer it that way i have a chicken and mushroom creamy coconut milk soup and then my favorite a butternut squash soup with a curry chicken salad so I um, hope you are inspired to cook some of these recipes and let's get started with the first dish. All right, so to start this first one, you need to bake your spaghetti squash and I just cut it in half and took the seeds out first and turned it upside down to cook it on a baking sheet at 350 for about an hour or until, it, until it's pork tender. And then I dished that out and um, just after it cooled a little bit, of course and then um, prepared that with everything else, which was super easy. And like I said, since I have a whole chicken already, I just used some leftover chicken to cut into smaller pieces to put in with the spaghetti squash. So this literally, with like active me in person time, took 15 minutes. Um, if you need your own sauce, of course it would take a lot longer, but I did not this time. I made it super convenient. It'd be really easy for a weeknight meal. So I did the spaghetti squash in a cast iron skillet along with the chicken. Of course you gotta put some seasonings in there, some garlic, some onion, and then I used a jar of marinara sauce that I get at Aldi. Like I said, you can make your own sauce if that appeals to you, which I have done before, but I just did this time. And then you have to have some cheese in it, and I put that in the oven then afterwards to bake, just to make it a little um, more casserole-like. So that was the first dish that I have served with a side. The second is now to my soups. So this black bean soup is a go-to for me. I did do the hard labor this time and use some dry black beans. You can use canned. This is a five ingredient soup, so super simple. Again, these are all, I like sharing simple recipes with you all, and I know many of you appreciate that because a lot of you do work out of the home, and it's nice to be able to come home and make a meal for your family. So um, it takes two cans of black beans. Um, if not, it would be like, two and a half cups of cooked black beans that I did in the Instant Pot. And then after that's cooked in the Instant Pot, I put it, I actually just used the Instant Pot to make the rest of the dish. And then I used a cup of chicken stock and a cup of salsa, some chili powder, and I think that's it. It's so simple, super simple. And you have that cook, and then I love my immersion blender. You'll see that in all these videos used my immersion blender, smoothed it out, and voila, it's done. Serve it with some Greek yogurt or sour cream, some avocado, some chips, um, and then we just had like some veggies on the side. Now to make it with some more protein, I had done pork in there before, and that adds a really nice flavor to it if you wanna add some extra boost and some more protein, or you could serve it with a sandwich on the side or a quesadilla or something, because it's Mexican style. Okay, to the second soup that I have, it was a creamy chicken mushroom soup. So this was based off of one I had done, um, like a white chicken chili, and so it's kind of got a little bit of a spice to it, but not too much. So again, that whole chicken is so convenient to have extra chicken and garlic. Um, you could put onion in it. I'm still watching what I'm eating a little bit as I'm still nursing. And then you can add some diced green chilies if you wanted. I didn't, but I did saute the garlic and the mushrooms together. And I probably used like 10 smaller mushrooms which worked for our family of three that eat. And then I sauteed those up. I added about 
six cups of chicken stock. I let that all simmer together, added the chicken in, and added some great northern beans, one can. If you want to boost that bean intake again, you can add two cans. You could add the two and a half cups of your own dry to cooked beans if that's what you prefer. Um, with this one, I use the can, so it's just, I go back and forth. And then I let that cook for a while. Then I added some arrowroot powder to thicken it. You can use flour, you could use cornstarch. It's up to you what you want to use as your thickener. And let that simmer for about five minutes. Then you add the really good part, the cook can of coconut milk. And I love that extra flavor it adds. It was the soup, it thickened up real pretty nicely. Um, we ate it with, again, some tortilla chips. You could use crackers, cheese. And it's just a really nice meal for a cooler fall day. Okay, my fourth and final dish and my last soup, my favorite, is my butternut squash soup. Now, I roasted the butternut squash, cut it in half. These were all for my garden, my squashes were. So I used two smaller butternut squash, cut them in half, took the seeds out, roasted them upside down for about, these only took about 40 minutes until um, they were fork tender. Then I dish scooped them out and preserved them in the fridge until I needed them for the soup part. Now you can roast your butternut squash by peeling the skin off and cubing it. That's just a lot more work in my opinion, so I do it this way. Um, okay, and then for the actual starting of the soup process, I had two cloves of garlic and two small green apples because that had such a nice fall flavor. It's so good with those green apples in there. So I sauteed those in some olive oil. Then I added about two and a half cups, three cups of chicken stock. And I had made my own chicken stock from that leftover whole chicken I cooked and used that to simmer for a while. And then I added some salt and pepper and then I added in the butternut squash. And then I let that cook for about 10 minutes on a medium heat. Immersion blender is back to smooth it out. Um, taste it. It's up to you to decide what you want for flavoring. You could add curry in this as well, um, but I didn't. It really was just a really good garlic apple butternut squash soup and super minimal ingredients for this one. And so then I also made some homemade sourdough croutons with some older sourdough bread I had. I just cubed them into like one inch cubes. I doused it with some olive oil, some Italian seasoning, so basil, parsley, thyme. If you still have some in your garden, snag that up before it freezes and put that in the oven, roast it for 10 to 15 minutes at uh, 350 degrees. And then to my curry chicken salad. So I was using the rest of the chicken I had from our whole chicken. And so I cut up the chicken, I diced some celery into it, and then some grapes as well I put in there to add a little sweetness. And then I used like half mayo, half Greek yogurt. You could use all mayo if you wanted, all Greek yogurt. It's up to you again. Um, and I probably used like half a cup total of that. I am not great at measurements. And then I also added just about a tablespoon of regular yellow mustard and mix that all together and that was delicious with about a teaspoon of curry powder. You can also add apple chunks in that, but we already had apple in the soup, so I thought I could omit the apple. And then I served that with some lettuce since we had the croutons and with the butternut squash soup and it was a hit. And I love, love, love this soup, especially during squash season. All right, that is all of my four simple meals for you for this fall time. Soup season to me actually could be year round. I love soups. So let me know in the comments if you would eat soups year round, if you could, or if you do. Anyways, I hope you're having a blessed and wonderful day and hope you're inspired to cook with some of the fall ingredients that you have around you. All right, bye.